Jesus isn't bothered by your doubts. So will you just reach out to him today? That's all he needs. He'll show up in the middle of your doubts like he's doing right now and just ask you, reach out to me. So in preparation for Easter, what I like to do, you guys, is I read the gospel stories over and over, the resurrection, like 20 times. And I pray through it on what God would have me share to his people. And, and the thing that stood out to me this year, I've never preached on this, but what stood out to me was who he appeared to. And like, why them? Why did he appear to them? And where he showed up because he had all the earth at his disposal. He's Jesus. He could go anywhere at any time. So let me ask you a question. I asked myself some of these questions as I was studying this. So let me ask you the question. Like if you were Jesus, where would you go first? Like you could go anywhere, anywhere. Where would you, where would you go first? Would you, would you go to the temple and would you go sit on the throne of David? Take your rightful place, Messiah and King, I'm here. Or would you go directly to like Caesar's palace? And you're like, that's it. We taken over the world, man. I'm back. I'm here. I'm risen. No, he doesn't do that. Why? Jesus didn't come to start a religion. He came to restore a relationship. And this is the central message of the gospel. He was not the Messiah they expected him to be. He, he was not. So, so he didn't go to the temple or to Caesar's palace. Instead, he appears by his tomb with his linens all folded up and stuff. And he invites people in to his most painful experience of his whole life. And probably never before has there been a greater contrast than the one who defeated death standing next to his tomb. And then he appears in a room with his disciples, his friends, and to offer the proof of his resurrection. He doesn't do a miracle. He doesn't turn water into wine. He doesn't say, reach out your hand, make it leprous and heal it again. No, he shows his scars and he opens the tomb and he invites people in to see his suffering. How unexpected a king is Jesus, a Messiah is Jesus. Where would you go first? And there's another question I ask, who would you appear to first? Like if you were Jesus, who would you? You can go anywhere, you can do anything. Like to me, when I, when I was asking myself this question, my mind first went to mom, Mary, because in the gospel stories, she's last seen at the foot of the cross. And she's seen the death penalty executed on her son, Jesus, that he was so beaten beyond recognition and the, the brokenness that Jesus would have to even experience her in, in that pain. So I kind of, if I was Jesus, I want to go to mom and just be like, mom, I'm okay, I'm okay, all right? And then immediately after that, my mind thought of Pilate. I'd like to go see Pilate, you know what I mean? That dude who sentenced me to death, this is just me. I know if, I'm not Jesus, okay? But, but in, in Matthew's story of, of you know, the, the sentencing of Jesus to death, Pilate's wife didn't agree with him. Y'all know that? Pilate's wife was like, hey, don't do it. See, I'm all need to listen to your wife, you know? She's like, hey, this doesn't feel right. Don't do it. And then, and then again, like as he's gonna issue the sentence, she slipped some a note right before him was like, I had a bad dream. This is not good. Please don't go through with this. And he does it anyway. So I kind of would like to show up to Pilate and be like, you should have listened to your wife, dude. Just kind of settle that argument right there. What's interesting, though, is the unlikely people that Jesus does appear to. And I hope in some way it can be something you can relate to because the rest of John's gospel is about these resurrection appearances. And I want to show you the three that John shows us. And I think there's a reason. I think it reveals something about Jesus. And I think Jesus wanted you to know something. That's why he showed up intentionally. Here's Because the first one, listen, the first one Jesus showed up to, wasn't one of the disciples. It wasn't a holy, it wasn't a religious person, it wasn't the church. It was a woman by the name of Mary Magdalene. Now Mary Magdalene was, we're told in the gospels that she was actually delivered by Jesus of seven demon spirits. And a lot of theologians believe that she, she, she probably suffered a lot of abuse to actually attract the, the torment and for her to be tormented by demonic spirits so much. This is who Jesus decides the first appearance. Let's look at it in John's gospel. Pick it up in verse 11 with me. Now Mary, that's, that's Mary Magdalene, stood outside the tomb. The guy's already left. Peter and John are already gone, but she's, 
She's stuck there. She's so brokenhearted she can't move. She's having a hard time coping with the situation. And I wanna pause right here for just a moment and speak to anyone who's hurting, to anyone who feels like you can't move on from the pain that you experience, who's having a hard time coping, who feels a little bit brokenhearted, that maybe it was a marriage or a child or some kind of hurt that you've been through. Here is Mary and she's crying. The Bible says, as she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white, seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and one at the, at the foot. Time out real quick. When angels show up in the Bible, oftentimes, like it's met with holy fear. People fall, they tremble. There's such glory with their prayer, presence. They respond in ways of, of fear, but she doesn't respond that way. Look how the angels though. The angels asked her, notice all of heaven is drawn to her soul that is hurting. They say, woman, why are you crying? And I want you to catch this because it doesn't feel like heaven is attracted to your pain, but I want you to know, um, the reason why you can't sense heaven in the moment of your hurt is because your hurt is blocking it. And here she doesn't even realize she's having a moment. Heaven is meeting her right here. And look how she responds. They've taken away my Lord. And I don't know where, where they put him. And at this, she turns around and you get the very first appearance of Jesus. And he didn't appear to, to someone who was ready to worship him and praise him. He appears to someone hurting. She was standing there, Jesus was standing there, but she didn't even recognize that it was Jesus. And I love telling people who are hurting and who are, who are broken, who are going through something difficult, there is something about your brokenness that heaven is attracted to. And there is a promise in the Bible in Psalm chapter 34, verse 18, that the Lord is close to your hurt, to your pain, to your brokenness. He's attracted to it. He could have gone anywhere. He had all earth at his disposal and he chose to first show up to somebody who was hurting so he can save those who are crushed in spirit. So the very first appearance to Mary, it shows us something about Jesus. And I think Jesus wants you to know this today. Will you write it down? Jesus isn't as far away as some of you think. So just look for him. You don't think he's close, but I promise you he is. And can I even encourage you to do that even in this service that we've designed this service in such a way with such prayer and intentionality that, that you would see and sense the living God, the risen King. If you would just look for him, the Bible says that if you look for him with your, all your heart, you'll find him because he's here. Hey, hey, Jesus is here. So, so the first resurrection was to someone who was hurting. The second encounter, Jesus appears to someone you probably know you probably know the name, even though you may, you, even if you've never been to church <laughs> in your whole life, you probably know the name Doubting Thomas, right? Poor Thomas, man. He doubts one time, and then forever he stuck with the name Doubting Thomas. I've often wondered if that's what happened to Karen. Do you know what I mean? Poor Karen. She was just having a bad day. You know what I mean? Is that what happened to Karen? She was having a bad day. Went off on one waiter when a millennial was filming her in her bob haircut. And now it's like, don't be a Karen. I'm sorry if you're Karen, by the way. We... <laughs> so, so here's what happens. Jesus appears to the disciples, but Thomas isn't there. And, 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 and the reason why was because Thomas already checked out. Thomas was like, it's it. It's over. Mission over. It isn't, it isn't going to happen. So he's, he's at this point officially become a doubter. And John continues and it says, now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the 12 was not when, with the disciples when Jesus came. And you would think, man, that's tough for Thomas. He missed out. So the other disciples actually rubbed it in. They told him, we have seen the Lord. And I almost feel like that's how doubt, doubters feel. It's, it's almost like they miss out on something. I don't understand why you guys are jumping up and down and raising your hand and, and like, why would you so happy? I don't get you people. And there's something in their mind that thinks there's either, either something wrong with you or there's something wrong with you, me, but there's totally, there is something wrong here. I just don't know what it is. And he actually draws a line in the sand. He goes, unless I see the nail marks in his hand for myself, unless I put my hand on the side, I'll never become a believer. I just, I just won't believe. And I want you to hear this for every person who says, what's up with you people? I just can't go there. I don't, I don't, I don't know what's happening here. I can't, I can't go there. Listen to me. Jesus isn't turned off by your doubts. And your doubts aren't going to keep Jesus away from you. 
Because, listen to me, Jesus loved Thomas so much that he shows up a second time just for him. Let me show it to you. Verse 26. A week later, his disciples were in the house again. And this time, Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them, which means he popped through the walls in the room and just showed up, which makes this line, next line, very necessary. He said, peace be with you, okay? Because that obviously freaked them out. I mean, just a few days earlier, one of his disciples chopped off an ear of a servant. So Jesus knows they're packing. He ain't going to come up in here and be like, get an ear chopped off or a finger or something like that. They're saved, but they ain't soft. You know what I'm saying? Come on, somebody. Peace. Hey, y'all, put it away. I'm coming. I told you I read the Bible different than some of you, okay? (laughs) Then he said to Thomas, really? Three years I've been walking with you, Thomas. Really? And you still don't believe? I mean, you saw me, dad. I'm standing here right here. Really? Dude, I just popped through a wall. Really? He doesn't say that. And I think that's sometimes how some of us treat doubters. Really? Really? You're going to doubt God now after all he's done? But Jesus doesn't do that. Jesus comes to where he is. And he says, okay, here you go. Put your finger right here. See my hands. And then he asked the doubter to do something. He says, but I need you to take a step. I need you to actually, I'll come to you. I'll I'll, I'll pop through walls. I'll show up. I'll take, but, but I need you to do one thing. Just reach out. Just reach out right where you are in the middle of your doubts, Thomas, and take a step. Reach out your hand. Put it in my side. Stop doubting and believe. And Thomas, that's all he needed. He said, my Lord and my God. So the first person Jesus appears to, and this is intentional, unexpected, but intentional. First person Jesus appears to, all of earth at his disposal, he goes to someone hurting, someone who's brokenhearted. The second person he goes to is a doubter. Here's what this reveals about Jesus and what I think he wants you to know today. Jesus isn't bothered by your doubts. So will you just reach out to him today? That's all he needs. He'll show up in the middle of your doubts like he's doing right now and just ask you, reach out out to me. 